Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, some news that may interest you and, technically, some news that may not. Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, some news that may interest you and, technically, some news that may not interest you. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Icarus has looked at massive surface scars on Charon, a moon of Pluto. It sought to potentially determine the origins of canyons and cryovolcanic flows on the surface, as seen on pictures taken by the New Horizons spacecraft last decade. The study works with the widely believed idea that Charon used to have a layer of water underneath the surface that has now frozen and, using various models, sought to identify whether or not it was this that caused the canyons and cryovolcanic flows. It concluded that although it was unlikely that cryovolcanic flows were formed due to a freezing ocean layer, it is likely that it could have formed the deep fractures that are found in the canyons of the moon. Studies on all of these pieces of data from past missions like New Horizons are extremely important as it helps us further understand astronomical bodies in general as well as details of our own solar system. And now over to Ben, hopefully with some paleontology news. Thanks Doug. First up in the news this week is the naming and description of a new kind of giant sauropod dinosaur from Argentina. Named Chucarasaurus diripienda, it's based on some fairly complete limb bones and a bit of the hip that were found in Upper Cretaceous rocks. Interestingly, there is a unique combination of characters recognised in the bones which demonstrate the leg bones can actually be quite variable in these dinosaurs. It's been classified as a Colossosaurian, the same group of titanosaurs that Argentinosaurus belongs to, and it adds to our developing understanding of sauropod biodiversity at this point in the late Cretaceous of Argentina. Also in the news is a remarkable new paper that shows how a population of Neanderthals were cooking and eating crabs. A cave in Portugal shows evidence of having been occupied by Neanderthals about 90,000 years ago, and this new paper reports on preserved crab remains from this site that date to the same point in time, during the Middle Paleolithic. Brown crabs were the most common species found here, and are mostly represented by parts of their pincers as these preserve best. There was a clear preference towards relatively larger crabs at this site, which makes sense as they would have the most meat, and patterns of fracture were recognised on some of the carapaces and claws that are indicative of deliberate breaks by hominins. About 8% of the crab remains also showed evidence of burn marks, suggesting that the Neanderthal inhabitants of this site had been cooking and then breaking open the brown crabs for their meat. These people likely went out and collected the crabs from nearby tide pools during the summer months. It's an absolutely amazing discovery, showing how Neanderthals were taking advantage of all kinds of different food sources depending on where they were living. Finally for the news this week, we have the amazing publication of a study describing an actual fossilised brain. This brain belongs to an ancient fish, a 319 million year old ray finned fish called Cococephalus wildi that was discovered in England. The truly astonishing thing about this fossil though, is the fact that the preserved brain is not simply an infilled mould of where the brain used to be, which has been the usual case in fossilised early fish brains, instead it's the actual brain tissue itself that's been mineralised and preserved, providing a far more detailed look at the brain anatomy of this animal than a simple mould would allow. So what does it tell us about fish brain evolution? Well, among living fishes, this cockercephalus brain looks most similar to paddlefish and sturgeons, a very early branching lineage of ray finned fishes and it also shows that the evolution of this organ in fish was far more complex than we'd previously appreciated. So an absolutely wonderful discovery then, and some really amazing paleontology news this week. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. We'll see you next week as we get ever closer to celebrating something very special indeed.